All right, guys, on the bench, we have the C.S. Simpson Model 60006, otherwise known as the High Gain 5. And I'm about to do a, a recap and alignment on this radio. But first, I wanted to take a synod measurement of it. And, uh, yeah, so basically do like a pre preliminary check on things. Um, so basically, I can kind of have proof before and after um, you know, to see, you know, how well I basically did, you know, uh, I use it as a baseline and that's where I find it most useful. Um, but I personally think the measurement used or described as is, is kind of useless. Um, you know, cause it's based on, you know, human speech. Uh, that 12 dB is something that's, uh, you know, it's, it's an objective thing because everyone here is different, right? My hearing might be better than yours, but, you know, this other person might have better hearing than me and, you know, so on and so forth. So that 12 dB of Synod is kind of, uh, kind of useless, you know what I mean, as far as uh, that spec goes. But the way I think it should be used um, is probably more important um, than the reason behind the whole Synod thing, uh, that whole measurement. So, yeah, so when you look at Synad itself, so I'm going to assume that, you know, nobody knows what Synad is. And uh, so basically this radio is getting fed, um, you know, minus 110 dBm signal at 30% modulation. And um, that's the Synad measurement. So basically to achieve 12 dB of Synad, this radio is, uh, needs to be fed 110, minus 110 dBm signal, um, you know, at a thousand hertz um, signal. So now what that would be, what this radio is, uh, that would be the send out of this radio right now. So what we strive for is to achieve 12 dBm or better at a smaller signal. So the smaller the signal, the better. So in this case, you know, if you look at the, the next measurement here, so if we can get 12 dB of sin out of minus 120, great, or minus 130, even better. You know, so that means that, you know, the lower, the higher the number, uh, well, I guess it would be the lower technically, right? Because you're going in the minus. So uh, the lower the number, um, the, the lower the signal, um, you know, the more sensitive your receive is. And that's exactly what we want. So... The problem now is, why don't all manufacturers give you a Synad uh, specification? I don't know why. I don't know if it's just they're scared that if they put that spec out, it's going to look bad compared to other, you know, uh, competitors' radios. I think that's probably what it is. Um, but then you might have companies out there that are proud of their Synad and will, you know, display it, uh, you know, without any issue. So when you look at this uh, high gain here, and you go into the SAMS manual, um, and you go into the specifications, and you go down to sensitivity, and you can see here on sidebands, it gives you the signal-to-noise ratio, and then on AM, it gives you the signal-to-noise ratio, but it doesn't give you Synod. You know, it's most radios that I encounter don't give you a Synod measurement. And in fact, when you go to a diagram here for the receiver align alignment you see a signal generator you see the radio power supply the 8 ohm speaker the vacuum tube voltmeter and then what's even optional which is crazy um, is an oscilloscope but considering the times you know uh, when these radios were new oscilloscopes weren't you know uh, I'm not saying techs didn't have them I mean they should have probably have them but it's you know it was kind of an exotic thing and, uh, you know, not everyone had an oscilloscope. So, you know, you'd use a, a, a vacuum tube voltmeter instead. But anyway, you don't see anywhere on here uh, a Synad meter. And that's, uh, you know, that's pretty common for most manufacturers. So then why worry about Synad, right? Yeah, I, I guess that's a, that's a valid point. Why worry about Synad, um, you know, if, you know, uh, these manufacturers are not giving you uh, a synod measurement or a synod, you know, procedure, uh, adjustment procedure. So when we go to, um, 
let me go here when we go to this alignment procedure here for this 142 GTL Cobra we can see that in the uh, portion of the receiver alignment you can see we actually have steps to adjust for 12 dB of synad you know there's actually two steps here and then if you can adjust for more than 12 dB of synod, even better. It just means your radio is that much more sensitive. Um, but yeah, so this is this is for the Cobra 148 GTL. Let me see if I can go up to this here. So now you see test equipment. You specifically see a synod meter and a distortion meter. And in this case, because this is uh, their speakers a four ohm load on the GTL signal generator, obviously the radio and the power supply. But you can see here, they specifically want you to hook up a synad meter. You know, and you know, if you go by today's equipment, probably what would work even better is a communications test center. And with those, you're gonna get the synad measurement anyway. Most of those will just spit out the synad measurement to you anyway. So why not use that to your advantage, right? So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you can get the measurement, great. Um, you know, you're that much more ahead of the curve. Um, that's another, basically another uh, measurement that you can use to help you align the radio properly. Uh, if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. Um, but I can probably suggest that if you are doing this professionally, that, you know... A, uh, a synod meter or a communications test center, um, you know, is probably your best bet. Um, because, like, the way I'm using it for here, like I had said before, you know, it's it gives you a good baseline. You know, so now what I'm going to try to do is, once I get this capped in the lines, I'm going to try to achieve better than 100, minus 110 dBm. And uh, the more sensitive I can make this radio, the better the better receiver it's going to be, right? So I think that's ultimately what I use Synad for. It's basically a baseline measurement to use uh, to improve upon. Um, and if I hope that makes sense to everyone. And not necessarily, you know, a measurement to achieve for best human uh, hearing, right? Uh, I, I hope that makes sense to everyone. Uh, in that, um, you know, in that, in that manner, right, so, uh, yeah, I use, I use my synod meter often, um, you know, but again, I do this professionally, I fix people's radios, and you want to give people professional results, and not just, you know, ballpark, uh, you know, or, like, kind of, like, good, uh, you know, alignments, and, uh, I feel like it is necessary for a professional to use, um, you know, if, uh, you know, especially if you want to give someone like a good report, like, hey, I plugged in your radio, you know, you were getting, you know, minus 10 dBm of, uh, uh, you know, signal at 12 uh, synod, you know, and after I did the cap and did the alignment, you know, we, we, we hit, you know, 130, you know, minus 130. And, uh, you know, you, you, you're, you seem more professional, right? I, I, I think that that's, that's the point I'm trying to make here, that, yes, it is a, a good, uh, measurement to have it is a good thing to have a baseline for especially if you're doing this professionally but it's not the end of the world if you don't have uh, a uh, synad measurement right uh, and, and you don't have really a meter and another thing you can kind of do if you have a signal generator and if you can still kind of hear the beep if your hearing is okay and you can still kind of hear the tone that, that 1000 uh, hertz tone you know, uh, at like 110, 120, and 130, chances are, ballpark figure-wise, you're reaching 12 or, you know, probably even better than 12, uh, you know, synod, you know. Uh, but obviously, you know, as a professional, you want to give professional results, so having exact numbers is, uh, you know, the way to go. Another note. So I get up in the morning and I turn on all my equipment, you know, every single piece of equipment, you know, both sides, whatever. And, um, you know, just to make sure things are warm. In fact, this signal generator here won't let you lock frequency if it's cold. Um, so, you know, it usually takes about 
you know, 10 minutes, but, you know, I think they say like a couple of hours, really, for uh, stuff to get, you know, um, to get fully warm and, uh, and normalize. But one thing I forgot to do was turn this unit on. And um, so when I plugged it in, this is obviously channel 19. Plugged in the signal generator, feed it a signal, turn it on, turn it to 19, not realizing that I didn't, you know, turn it on. And I'm getting nothing, no signal, no, no, uh, you know, no, uh, no frequency. And um, I realized that, you know, I didn't turn it on. So then I turn this to channel 18 and wouldn't you know that, you know, it starts, um, you know, receiving on 18. So it goes to show you how far off frequency these things are when they're cold. You know, I realize this, you know, it's old caps, you know, it doesn't have an alignment onto it, but... Um, it still goes to show you how when something is, uh, when a radio is cold, how far off channel it is. It was one whole channel off. It was, uh, you know, that was channel 19. This was receiving the signal on channel 18. So, you know, nothing new to anybody, but I just figured I'd share that information. Uh, Alright guys, uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and if you guys have any suggestions, uh, please just... Let me know, or if you want to see uh, anything specific in the future, uh, again, let me know. Thanks for watching.